Good morning. Good morning, Bethel family. Welcome to worship. We are very thankful for you this morning. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. We are still waiting for the coming of the one who comes to witness our struggles as humans. But before we start, I have some announcement for you. So you are invited to record yourself or and your family saying Merry Christmas. So once you've done that, you email it to, to the church by fi Friday, December 18. All the information is in the bulletin. And also, you are invited to worship and celebrate the reason for the season with us, which is our um, candlelight service. It's going to be on YouTube on Thursday, December 24th at 6 p.m. So we have all the information for you how to get ready for it in the bulletin as well. Um, we will be um, having virtual communion all the month of December until, I think, um, Thursday the 24th. So it, sh it tells you how to get ready for it also. And if you need pastoral care, please let us know. You can call the church or you can call me directly to um, my phone number and then the church number also is in the bulletin for you um, to use. So now let's um, take um, a deep breath to invite the Holy Spirit to come um, within us. the spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless of our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life when it takes away from one effect all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. So now it's time to light the candle. So the song is on page six, so we will sing verse three. Light one candle to watch for the Messiah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. 
hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 7 in your bulletin, Hark the Glad Sound. The grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 4, 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord. <clears throat> to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has clothed me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself for the garland, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. <clears throat> for as the earth brings forth its shoots... And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. 
Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Najib. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the, the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second lesson, 1 Theologians, 5th chapter, 16 to the 24th verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in, Jesus, God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Here ends the lessons. We will continue with our prayer requests for today. Lord of all in need, Search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Shirley, Pat, Connor and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Andrew, Marda, Nicholas, and Marissa, and finally Brent. We pray for the family and friends of Xavier Magdaleno, friend of Janet Baker, who passed away December 7th due to COVID-19. We pray for hope, comfort, help and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember those who are most vulnerable to the disease as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We thank you for helping and protecting those who have fought the wildfires in our area. And we ask for your care for those who are recovering from the destruction. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty and we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. 
We pray for the work of the Sierra Pacific Synod of the ELCA in bringing the light of Christ's grace and salvation to our world. We pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon song, song hymn is on page 10, What Feast of Love.
today we'll observe the third Sunday of Advent, filling us with a sense that the time is getting short and soon our joy will be complete in the celebration of our Savior's birth. But still, we are waiting. Advent is the season of waiting and hoping and anticipating and wishing for some assurance that God does indeed love us and that God is in control of our lives and the future. But our gospel reading reminds us that Advent is also a season of impatience, a time filled with questions. Will everything come together the way we hoped? Have we thought of everyone? Will our gifts be appropriate, adequate, appropriate, appreciated? Are we doing enough for those for whom this will not be a happy time of celebration? The poor, the grieving, and the discouraged. Always in the back of our mind is that dull fear that we have forgotten something, that Christmas will not unfold the way we anticipate. The Gospel reading also remind us of our identity and our role as witnesses. We must testify to Jesus' birth in the midst of a pandemic, political fallout, illness, death, violence against women, violence in general, the kidnapping of other human bodies. That's what many people in Haiti are worried about right now. So many challenge situations to speak to. But the one character from today's gospel is a man sent from God whose name is John. John is called different names in the Gospels. For instance, in Matthew, he is John the Baptist. In Mark, he is called John the Baptizer. In Luke, he is John, the son of Zechariah. In our Gospel today, the Gospel of John, he is just plain John who will not even say that much when the religious authorities come to question him. Who are you? This is the question posed to John by the deputation from Jerusalem. People are wondering whether you are the Messiah or not. What have you to say for yourself? Who are you? John answers truthfully, but differently each time. Trying to be clear about his identity, he answers in three ways. The first way, he clarifies who is not. I am not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. The second way, oh, by the way, he is not the one who wrote the gospel either. But the second way, he references a Hebrew Bible text that discloses something of his vocation. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. And the third way that he answers, he owns the limitation of his actions. I baptize with water, but there is another eminently more worthy than I am. The limitation the Baptist confesses is the gap between the person he announces and the person he is. To witness to Jesus, John has to know who he is not, who he is, and what he does. Can these same three methods help us claim our identity within our vocation to bear witness to Jesus? Can we respond to who are you 
as John does, in a way that shows, us, shows our relationship to God and all that God wants us to be. John's identity is crucial to how he's able to bear witness and what his character witness means. But this passage isn't just about John. It's also about his testimony. I pull out of the text three qualifications we learn about Jesus from John's witness that a first time hearer would not have known. So the first one is, Jesus is the true light. In John's gospel, light refers to Jesus, the words, ability to create and maintain life. The second one, Jesus is exalted. John is not worthy to untie his sandal. And the third qualification, Jesus is the Lord, the one that Isaiah prophesied about, the one who will bring good news, healing, liberty, comfort, gladness, justice, rejoicing, and liberation. Now I hope you'll agree with me that this is a massive witness. Imagine. The questioners had not known those things about Jesus, and yet they were the religious establishment charged with knowing stuff about true light, prophecy, prophecy the lie, the Lord God. Isn't it predictable that those leaders faced with embarrassment would either want to cover up for their ignorance or would want to discredit this out, outlier witness, John. John's witness lends credibility to Jesus' movement. Furthermore, in John's gospel, witness in, is the beginning of faith, bearing witness to the word Jesus Christ is the foundation for the emergence of human faith in God. One of my best memories of bearing witness was when I used to go to the Sunday evening worship at the Tabernacle Church in Haiti with my friends. There was a time in the worship where the leader would ask if people had testimonies to share because he said, we all have experienced God one way of, or the other in the week. It is the time to tell what we have seen and heard, and we confess that we believe about it, what we believe about it. I, I, I usually was the first one to raise my hand. I was excited to share where I've seen Jesus showed up in my life that week. Just as John knew who he was in relationship, in relation to who Christ was, I claim my identity with gospel, especially remembering that I was not Christ, but a witness to him. My role in this, in that time, like John's role in his time, like the role of, of all of us today, you, me, us, was to confess who I was not and proclaim the one to whom I testified. My friends, today's gospel is a significant Advent text. It reminds us that the first witness to Jesus arrived on the earthly scene before Jesus did. He arrived not to get everything decorated for Christmas, but to prepare the way of the Lord. In this season of Advent, that is typically described as one of preparation. What does it mean to prepare? Maybe preparation means simply adjusting our eyes to see one another for who we truly are. Instead of finding fault, seeing the other person as the one for whom Christ came to dwell among us. God calls us 
to be witnesses like John who point to Jesus and say, look, so that all might know God's pastures of peace. Perhaps pointing and saying, look, can be our preparing the way. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the nine in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and give thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat, and drank. Sibling in Christ, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The creator of all stars, bless you, your advent waiting. The long expected savior filled you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey. Now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. 
Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 11, Joy to the World. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord, be safe. Thanks be to God.